Wonderful. Namaste. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the fourth session of Loka Kalyana Seva Talks. And today, our host is Nikhil Kulkarni, who is going to discuss about awakening the sun within. These talks, as you would have already observed in the past three talks, is more about the message than the messenger. So without much ado, let's get on to the message. And Nikhilji, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kumar, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present myself, uh, whatever tiny bit of understanding I gather. Uh, and for others, I mean, uh, Kumar sir is the inspiration for whatever we are going to see. I mean, he is the one who brought me to this. Uh, I used to do Surya Namaskar for almost since my childhood. It's just part of my life. But I happened to attend one of the sessions with Kumar sir, and it was on the Purusha Sukta. And he explained me the concept of the Nishkam Karma Yoga. And he said we should give something back to the society. And it was in 2013, I remember. And I, I was thinking like, what can I give back to society? I don't really do much other than my job. Uh, but then this thing came up like, okay, Surya Namaskar. So why don't we teach Surya Namaskar to people? And I was under perception that, okay, I came from a land where Surya Namaskar like a common place. But uh, when I really started teaching this in the Veda temple, uh, I figured like, I mean, many parts of India are still not aware about this and there is a lot to be taught. And I felt like I got a purpose for my life. And then I continued uh, to do start study and kind of collect whatever tribal wisdom I could gather based upon my level of intelligence. And then I came up with a presentation and then I continued to deliver these lectures and sessions. People kept on asking good questions. And that was a very fulfilling experience again, as we say, like Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunatu. So it was a learning on both sides and it was a very good fulfilling experience for me. Uh, recently, I published my first book on this topic. It's called Surya Pasana. And it was published by the Vivekananda Kendra in Kanyakumari. Uh, right now, this is published only in Marathi. Uh, but the Hindi version is ready. English version is at work. And I'm talking to somebody who can take it to Kannada also. So looking forward to taking to at least all languages in India. So thank you so much, Kumar, sir, for the, for the wonderful journey. All right. So um, as you can see, we are going to talk about sun. And we are going to talk about us also. So the topic of today is... Uh, is awakening the sun within. So as I, as I said, I continued to grow and I, I found a small institute called Surya Namaskar Alliance, which we use as a you know, like-minded people come together and we think about sun and everything that sun can do to us. And the focus is sun and its effects on our mind, body and the overall energy. So today we will have a kind of a quick understanding in terms of what is Surya Namaskar and, and what it really is not. So let's get into it. So today's agenda, as I could figure out, is know thyself. And we would take a look at the Rigvedic way, the scientific way. And then we will dive into Surya Namaskar. And let's take a look at how it is going to affect the body, the mind, and the energy. And at the end, we will take a look at something called the aware principle. Um, so know thyself. The first question is, why would one want to know thyself? I mean, what if we don't know ourselves? Is it going to harm us? Is it going to stop us? Is it going to make us incapable of doing something? So I found this quote very useful in understanding uh, the purpose or reasoning behind why one should know thyself. I mean, you find peace not by rearranging the circumstances of your life, but by realizing who you are at the deepest level. And that is the very reason uh, each one of us should uh, undertake that journey to know uh, at the deepest level who we are. Uh, so here is my understanding uh, in terms of who we are. So 
when I look at my existence, I look at my existence in terms of three different faculties, the body, the hardware, the mind, the software, and the energy, the raw power to do anything that I do in my life. So now when I talk about myself, uh, I have a certain set of parameters and the, those parameters give me my identity. And my overall identity is a combination of like hundreds and thousands of parameters. So I just pull like a four parameters just for quick comparison. Uh, so what is my overall identity? I'm a Marathi speaking Hindu with Indian origin and brown skin tone. Okay, these are my distinct parameters. They will define me or separate me from others. Uh, so now in the search of my identity, uh, what I need to do is some of these parameters belong to my body. Some of these parameters belong to my mind. And if I want to know my own identity, which is actually the soul or energy, I basically need to uh, subtract these parameters that are for body and the mind. So in search of identity of my soul or energy, what I would do is overall identity minus the identity of the body and the identity of the mind. And that will deduce me to the identity of my soul or my energy. So what does Rugveda says? Rugveda has a, uh, a, a very uh, beautiful sukta called Surya Sukta. And that, that is about sun. It talks about sun. It appreciates sun. And it ends with a very beautiful rucha. It's called Surya Atma Jagastastu Shascha. And the meaning of that is everything around us, be it mobile or immobile, the soul of everything that we see, that we feel is the sun. That is the very meaning of that. So it can be a rock, it can be a flower, it can be a snake, butterfly, cow, human. It can be anything. Um, the soul of everything is the sun. So I order them in a particular order, like rock, flower, snake, butterfly, cow, and human, um, in terms of the brain evol evolution of their brains. So uh, rock is pretty less vibrant. And then as we go down, the vibrancy goes up. And the expression also goes becomes better and better because of the neocortex. So but everything. Uh, everything starting from rock all the way to human, the soul is sun. And that is the Rigvedic meaning. So let's use the modern science and see if we can still prove that theory. Uh, for that, I would like to consider two different uh, uh, physical aspects. The first is the first law of thermodynamics. And what does it say is, uh, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can be converted from one form to the other. Just, just keep that in mind. Uh, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, okay? And the second equation that I would like to consider is the Einstein's equation, uh, E is equal to mc square. So what this equation tells me is E is the energy and m is the mass and c is a constant. So basically what this equation is telling me is E, that is energy, is it directly proportional to M, M that is the mass. So in simple term, how we can conclude is anything that has mass has equivalent amount of energy in it. Okay, so right now we looked at two equations. Uh, first says energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. And the second equation tells me that every mass has an equivalent amount of energy. Now let's take a look at our solar system. Now our solar system has one sun and it has a planet around it, a few planets around it, and they have their own moons and all that stuff. It has big planets like Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus. It has small planets, Pluto, Mars, Venus. It has Earth in it. And Earth has so many number of creatures. It has, it used to have dinosaurs. I mean, they were gigantic animals. We have elephants, rhinos, we have small creatures, flies, insects, worms, 
and even corona. Okay, see, so this all together makes a closed system. We call it as a solar system. And now, if we apply these two equations, that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. So the total energy of this solar system is fixed. It, it, is, it cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed. All it is doing is it is changing from one form to the other. And now the second equation is telling me that every piece of mass has equivalent energy. So everything within this solar system has a, some equivalent energy if, uh, in, in correlation to its mass. If it has a larger mass, it has a larger energy. If it has a smaller mass, it has a smaller energy. But mass is energy. And now if we look at the solar system, the only donor of energy in this system is the sun. So I think with these two statements, all we can conclude is we all are made up of the sun. And we means literally we, anything that we see around us, uh, we feel it, we may not feel it, it's all made up of sun. So I think that gives me a good understanding about my roots, where I come from. Uh, so uh, I'll take a breather and see if there are any questions here. So in other words, we are an extension of the energy system of the sun in a diminutive form or in our own form. Right. A question. Uh, this is Sanjeev. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Where, where are, uh, from what source how are you making this inference? Sorry, I'm late to the uh, meeting. So I gave you two, uh, two equations. The first is the first law of thermodynamics. And that is energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. And the second is the Einstein's equation, it is E is equal to MC square. Oh, so this has nothing to do with uh, Surya Siddhanta or uh, uh, Navagraha uh, no. system? Okay. No. no. Another question, so the first slide you, you, talk, you mentioned that the rock has soul. I didn't quite get that slide. Like what, what from your perspective, what does it mean that rock has soul? I, I, Maybe I didn't get that slide. Uh, oh, this one? Yeah, I didn't understand okay. how, what, I can understand flower, snake, butterfly, cow, and human, but I can't quite understand what does it mean for a rock or a chair or a table to have a soul? Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you one example. Uh, rock has atoms mm -hmm. and atoms has energy and atoms as electrons, protons. I mean, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, if you look at the items for rock and the items for human, ultimately they boil down to the energy. And that energy is the soul of that, that particular element. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. That, is, that is really interesting, but uh, uh, how do you define soul? What is your definition of soul? Soul is energy. So your definition of soul is energy. Yes. Okay, but um, uh, uh, the dictionary definition may be different, right? Uh, right, and my definition is actually not my definition. I'm not that learned to make a definition of a soul. My definition is coming from Vivekananda. Okay, but that could be confusing a lot of people and uh, lead to misunderstandings, right? Because, you know, we need to go by, when you are using English language, we need to go by the dictionary meaning of the word soul. Let, let me then, jump uh, in here, Sajeev, let me jump in here. I think uh, I would say, and I will take this permission from you, at this point in time, we are not using the word soul in its absolute what you call dictionary meaning. However, when you start discussing about soul, especially in Vedanta, ultimately it comes down to what is the essence? Okay, so, got it. But uh, what is the equal? Is there an equivalent word in Sanskrit for soul? 
let's not go there, please. Because if I start talking about Atma, then Atma also is not a soul because Atma means none other than. So it is none other than our essence. And our essence is, when you look at the rock, flower, snake, etc., is at this point, even the rock has energy as Nikhil so beautifully put it, going down to the atomic physics of it, there is worry, you know, whirling electrons around whatever the rock is made of around its own nucleus. And therefore, rock has a vibration as energy, but then that energy is not the same as and as kinetic as it is in a flower, much less or much more than the snake, butterfly, cow, and the human being. So from a human being perspective, you and I are used to the word soul, especially in English as it is described. But then English soul, pardon me to say that, does not provide justice to the word used in Samskrita in Vedanta, which is Atma. And when you look at the etymology, etymological meaning of Atma, it is none other than. So what is none other than? What is the essence in all these things? That's all it means. Yes, yes. I, totally, I totally Prana? understand what you're saying. Uh, the point I was trying to make was, uh, you know, let us not uh, like use soul for energy or essence when uh, there is a totally different dictionary meaning because that will not only confuse Hindus, and it will, uh, you know, cause attacks on us. I mean, in, this is a close group. I'm not saying that, but very, we, very good a lot of things uh, interchangeably, and that confuses people. Yeah. Very, very uh, good point, Sanjeev, and that's the reason we normally say, right? Any slide has its own life, and so hopefully, uh, this lecture can only provide us the background to the word used and the definition used for now. But let's not consider this now, with your permission, again, Sanjeev this to be the ultimate absolute definition. So okay, if, yeah, long, sure, sure. Yeah, as long as you're able to be in tune with what Nikhil is trying to say, we are okay. If yes. not, then we can provide more, you know, uh, what you call uh, explanation, if you need. Yes. yes I think uh, yeah. Sanjeev, Sanjeev asked what is the equivalent of soul in Sanskrit? Maybe, maybe consider that as prana instead of atma. Now you see, Sanjeev, we can, we, the way, we've got one more word. We're bandy about it now. And thank you, Shiv Shankari, for jumping in. But let's move on as long as, Sanjeev, you are with us and uh, this discussion. Yes, right? let's move on. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Any other questions? Okay, sounds good. So now, uh, going back to our three faculties of existence, we have the body, we please have mute the mind, your, and mute yeah. your microphones, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. So we talked about the three faculties of existence. We have the body, we have the mind, and we have the energy. And now let's see what. I think. Uh, Namaskara is. I think Prashant, we have to mute. Could you please mute, sir, Prashant? Thank you. No, it's still there. We go. Okay. Can we can we both unmute Mr. Rashan Kotwal? Yes, yes. Okay. Sir, we are getting noise from your side, sir. Please, Prashan. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I did. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, okay, wonderful. So as we looked at our existence, we have three dimensions, the body, the mind, and the energy. Now let's take a look what Surya Namaskar can really do to our body. So we have seven asanas, distinct body postures, 12 positions, 11 transitions. We have a lung pull of breathing, and we use pretty much 97% of our muscle groups. And it can be used as a meditative as well as an aerobic exercise for cardio health. So this is about the body, now about the mind. So Surya Namaskar actually gives us an opportunity to capture all the four registers of our working memory, uh, using the position name, the Surya name, the Chakra name, and the Chakra color. 
chakra color gives us an opportunity to capture the visual memory also and basically this is an opportunity uh, to get into a state of thought free state of mind and this is about the mind and talking about the energy what we can really do about the energy is uh, probably we can experience the energy and i don't know how much uh, how many of us are capable of experiencing the energy within so this is where surya namaskar can actually come to our help so as we have looked at like we all are made up of sun and we have proved that so now we can see how surya namaskar can help us get that experience of the energy so surya namaskar is a upasana i mean there is a difference between the upasana and sadhana but upasana is uh, upa adhik asana so it is an act to be like our deity and finally acquire a place just next to our deity so surya namaskara is an upasana of sun and as gautam buddha says what you think you become what you feel you attract and what you imagine you create so we are going to make best use of this this sentence what we propose is we propose something called the aware principle and aware principle is a is arise and awake before the sun w is witness and indulge in the glory of the rising sun a is appreciate and thank the rising sun for everything we got in our life and r is the reaffirm the conviction that we are the finest creation of the sun and lastly e is experience the existence of the very sun in everything around us so some of these are definitely going to help us reset our circadian clock so basically surya namaskara is done at or before the sunrise so we are arising and we are all awake before the sun uh, we are going to witness and indulge in the glory of the rising sun and as i said not many of us are capable of looking the energy source within so the best thing we can do is we can see the energy source in front of us and as we what we think is what we get and as what we feel is what we become so if we feel that if we indulge in that experience of sun i mean we are attracting that within us the a is appreciate and thank the rising sun for everything we got in our life this is more like a gratitude journal so gratitude journal has substantially positive effects on our brain our mind it's basically we are writing a script to ourselves and we are thanking the sun for everything that we got in our life starting from the breath all the breath that we had all the food that we ate all the experiences that we had on this planet so we thank from the bottom of our heart to the sun and then it acts as a gratitude journal uh, r is the reaffirm the conviction that we are the finest creation of the sun this is again a sort of a self talk uh, this is where we are uh, convincing ourselves we are reaffirming ourselves that we are not an ordinary something but we are a creation of the sun we are made up of the sun and many of the stotras that we say before the sun uh, before the sun salutation surya namaskar they are actually a reaffirmation that we are the finest creation of the sun and finally the experience the existence of the very sun in everything around us so one of the objective of surya namaskar is i mean there are definitely certainly advantages to the body but the biggest advantage i see is to is a substantial reduction in the entropy of the mind and the entropy of the mind is it it happens as the thoughts the level of thoughts go down and if we experience that everything around us is also made up of sun then i think probably uh, our level of fear our level of anxiety substantially goes down and that is going to help us uh, with reducing the entropy of the mind 
So experiencing the existence of very sun in everything around us so that we don't find ourselves foreigner in, in any of our life situation. So this is the aware principle. So let me go to the next slide. And let's talk about what Surya Namaskara is not. I mean, there are a lot of perceptions and misconceptions about Surya Namaskar. Uh, one of them is it is a substantially physical routine. Uh, it is a physical routine. I mean, as I said, you can customize this exercise in, in the way you want it. Uh, it can be a very, very vigorous physical routine. But it is not just a physical routine. It is not just some form of yoga. It is not just some form of meditation. Then what it is? As I said, it is a gratitude journal. For me, Surya Namaskara is the gratitude journal. And it is my opportunity to admire and appreciate my source. Once I identify myself as a part of sun, I will start appreciating sun more. And the more I appreciate, the better I get. And that is why the biggest, uh, what it is about Surya Namaskar is it is the gratitude journal. Uh, next is method to connect with our source. Uh, next is it is a tool to remind ourselves about our real identity. And the most important is a, it is a method to understand, internalize and practice the qualities of our source. So where do we really do that? So when I say uh, Surya Namaskar, it is a combination of uh, multiple things. I, as I said, we'll be chanting the Surya names. And Surya names are a really good way to, to appreciate the sun, to, to understand the sun. Uh, there are 108 Surya names, all of them are beautiful, but for Surya Namaskar practice, I mean, we have taken a subset of the, those names and we take 12 names out of that. And each one of those names have a beautiful meaning. Every name talks about sun. Every name gives us an, an opportunity to understand the sun, explore the sun more, its qualities, and then appreciate and thank the sun. So, to give you an example, uh, I will say there is a name uh, for Surya, it's called Pushni. So Pushni is like nourisher and nourisher is not really the parent. I mean, parents are nourishers, but nourisher is slightly different than parent. So let me give you an example. A newborn child uh, is, is looking for help. And he or she is looking for help from anybody. I mean, it doesn't really has to be his or her parents. Uh, anybody can help that child, uh, feed the child or change the diapers or whatever. Uh, that child doesn't really care. I mean, who is helping? So the person who is helping that child, whether it is a parent or not, that is the nourisher. And... Uh, when I say Om Praha Pushne Namaha in Surya Namaskar, what I actually mean is the sun has been my nourisher. Uh, I mean, that nourisher really doesn't really have any expectation when the child will grow up, whether that child will respect me or say thank you to me or something like that. It's basically a Nishkama Karma Yoga uh, done by that nourisher. Uh, it's same like with sun. Uh, sun has been feeding me right from my birth or even before that. And without any expectation, uh, not a whole lot of people really think that there is sun in the sky. I mean, they just take it for granted. Okay, sun will be there and I'll be going to my office. So not a lot of us are really, uh, really uh, conscious that there is the sun and that's why there is a day. And so I need to go there and thank the sun. So this is my opportunity. When I say pushne, when I call the sun as a nourisher. And I say, okay, I mean, without any expectation, you give me everything. And that's why I come to you and I say, thank you for that. So this is how uh, every name has a, has a beautiful meaning. Uh, let me give you one more example, like uh, Om Rahum Arkaya Namaha. So Arka is another beautiful name. Uh, Arka is like the one with the, with the, with the best wisdom uh, in it. So uh, 
in in our in our technology what we call is like a data and then information and then the knowledge and the in the wisdom so uh, so sun has all the data of this universe sun has all the information about this universe sun has knowledge how to use that information also and sun has actually use that knowledge over generations of so many thousands and hundreds and thousands of years so it has that experience also and that's why i'm calling the sun as the one with the highest of the highest wisdom and that's why i appreciate you and that's what i mean when i say om raum arkaya namaha so basically all these 12 names are give me an opportunity to understand the qualities of the sun revise on the qualities of the sun and appreciate and try to see if if uh, any of those qualities i can take any of those qualities and be a better human being so that is a very purpose of uh, uh, surya namaskar um, there are questions a lot of people ask me questions uh like okay uh, is it necessary that i should do the surya namaskar in all those 12 12 positions and all um see this is a uh, this is not like a mandatory kind of thing it is your connection with the sun i mean the very purpose of surya namaskar i want to enforce is is this is a exercise of gratitude this is a exercise of showing love to our very creator so there should be no compulsion of any sort i mean if you can do all the 12 positions and you can do like 108 repetitions yes you are awesome you can do it you should do it but if you can't do it i mean there is no harm i mean there are people who are having many kind of ailments they can't even walk they can't get out of their bed so what do they do i mean they still have the opportunity to connect with the sun so all they they have to do is kind of look at the window where the sun is coming to meet them and say thank you i mean this is also called a surya namaskar so um uh, it is a personal exercise it is a personal routine uh but it has to be part of our life uh why i say that because sun is rising every day whether you like it or not uh, whether it is a sunday or monday it is rising every day it is doing everything that it is supposed to do and it is giving it uh, everything with all hands to us so it is our responsibility to at least acknowledge its presence and uh, say thank you and that is the best way to start the day and that is uh, that is the sole purpose of of surya namaskar in in my per perspective so um, any questions i'll take a breather here and see if if there are any questions actually nikhil when uh, other persons are trying to think through a question yeah you you just uh, trigger two famous verses from rigveda mm -hmm. again i am referring to the subsection of purusha sukta mm -hmm. verse number 16 where just like our sanjeev was asking mm -hmm. you know it is so difficult to explain the word either in english soul or even mm -hmm. atma yeah yeah so what the rishi did because it is not just sanjeev who is asking this question today even before we were born the present generation you know there were folks who were wondering uh, uh, trying to ask the question what the heck are you talking about rishi and so yes. the rishi said aditya varnam tamasas parastat right sarvani rupani vichitya dhiraha you know so in other words the rishi had to point out and say i know i cannot conceptualize and verbalize mm -hmm. what is purusha yeah consciousness right awareness pure rather than that look at the sun and the light and then of course vishwamitra played upon it and Wonderful. said yeah. it is bargaha yeah. yeah it is savitaha and that is the the mahi that, that is all of us want wonderful so that is one verse which provides 
as you said, that the sun and I, without all those namani, rupani, vichitya dhiraha, right. none of those variants of the names and forms. Yeah. I am that pure light out there. Correct. So yeah. that is one thing I understood. And Wonderful. the second thing which you mentioned is the 18th verse which says, yajnena yajyama yajanta deva tani dharmani pradhamanyasan tehanakam mahimanas sachante yatra purve sadhya santi deva. What that means is, yajnena yajyama yajanta deva. All the devas starting from the sun. Deva, divinity yeah. as in energy. The rishis didn't know English to use the word energy. They mm -hmm. stopped with deva. And then they said there are mummukkoti narayana. The right. source of nara, ayana of nara is okay. mummukkoti. 330 crore type of sub-energy systems. Therefore, right. the rock is there, the flower is there, the snake is there, the human being is there, the species yeah. are there, even the DNA is there. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And all this, not an Einstein or any other scientist wake up one fine day and say, I found it. Yeah. It all happened as a yajna. And yeah. those of us who have attended Purusha Sukta understand mm -hmm. it very clearly that this is Purusha Evedagam Sarvam. Mm, awareness yeah. is all it is. And awareness you explained it beautifully. Nikhil, you said it beautifully saying that it is the sun within, without. We are it. We are it, yes. No name, no form. So it says, yajna yajjama yajanta devaha tani dharmani pratamanya san. That is the reason it is sanatana dharma. That is the first dharma. What is the first mm -hmm. dharma? Yajjena yajjama yajjama. That's all it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, the human being, as you said rightly, you want to go to the office without looking at the sun or taking yeah. the sun for granted every day. Yeah. But yeah. instead, you said it beautifully, why don't you perform an upasana at your own pace, at your own health condition, yeah. no need to give, get up and even go towards the sun, yeah. even in the on your bed, if you can make the sun rays fall yeah. on you, just yeah. be grateful and say, I am that. At least at that point in time, at least once a day, if not more number of times. So that's what I took from here. Yeah. And I must thank you for this. Meanwhile, yeah. let's yeah. throw yeah. it to questions. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You said it rightly. I mean, well, how I look at it is, I mean, we take it so granted. Okay, I'm sitting in my, on my bed and the sun is coming through the window. It's not that easy. I mean, just imagine that sun is coming through so many different obstacles and so many different ways and it is making sure that it is entering through your window. So if we start thinking through that angle, I mean, it makes it feel like, wow, I mean, you really understand the magic in that, that movement. Yeah. And the other thing also I took away from you is you beautifully explained how, as far as awareness is concerned, mm -hmm. it is just pure. And then it is, fortunately or unfortunately, the human being, whoever it is, yeah. who looked at the data and today we are fighting with data analysis, data mining, and all kinds of data sciences. Whereas those days, all that the human being did was looked at how the data could be an information to him or to herself mm -hmm. to benefit. Yeah. And that information became knowledge. Yeah. So pure knowingness, with that I became a knower mm -hmm. to know and acquire knowledge, and that knowledge with skill, with experience, became my own proprietary wisdom. Yeah, yeah. And you explained it beautifully, and thank you so much for relating knowingness to wisdom, to experience, to mm -hmm. experiencing the energy in itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Sure, sure. thank so you. Let's go for the questions. I have one question with uh, reference to what you were alluding to, Guruji, a while ago. Bargo Devasya Dimahi. So my question is, uh, with that in mind, should Surya Namaskara precede 
the chanting of Gayatri Mantra or it doesn't matter? Well, if you know the Gayatri Mantra and the meaning, it matters a lot because you're doing more knowledgeably, more consciously, competently. Right? Because yeah. most of us go to the temple, look at the idol and just do a namaste and look at that idol as a personality. A Vishnu or a Shiva or a Lakshmi or a Saraswati. We forget to not look at the idol and go. I'm talking about people who are at a higher level of understanding and who can transcend religion and can look at the spiritual aspect or purport what the rishis have given us through the deities in the temple. It is needed. Temple is needed. Idols are needed. But that's for the high school, primary school, but not for the PhD level where Nikhil is trying to address. So coming back to your question, therefore, the better you know the meaning, you, your gratitude, connectivity. In other words, if you remember Puja Vidhi, our three C, connect, communicate, and commune. You are communing with the energy system that you are, even though you initially thought I'm a part of it or a bit. Now you're saying, Purusha ye Vedagam Sarvam, the Surya is all it is within and without. Now you see how much competence and consciously it makes you feel. Does it answer, sir, your question? Mm -hmm. Sir, does it mean the intent is more important than the way we do it? Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Vimla Garu. Perfect. Yeah. Intent, attention, and the determination or will. These three to connect, and, and, commune, and go ahead. Yeah, yeah and in, in, in case of sun, I would say consistency also. There you go. Yeah. Ekagritha. Yeah. Single pointed focus. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency. Yeah. Remember the Zeno effect. As often as you see, then the plane stops. So as often as you intend and attend with a strong will at the energy of the sun, you are energized. Yeah. Is that okay, sir? Nikhil? Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. I mean, my, my personal experience is the more, uh, the more you do, more indulge you get into the experience of sun, uh, more aware you become about your surroundings. Uh, you will start appreciating leaves. You will start appreciating the, uh, the flowers and the, and the petals and everything. I mean, your perspective towards everything will change and it will be more loving. It will be more considering, more curious. So that's, that's my personal experience. Connectivity enhances. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Guruji, uh, thank you, Nikhil Jai. Excellent uh, talk. And one one thing is, um, you, since you brought up Vishwamitra, Sage Vishwamitra, Aditya Rajdayam is another tool oh, yes. or mechanism to accomplish all that you just mentioned, the three things. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Good it mention. is so well written. And in fact, there it mentioned that Shiva and Vishnu are also praying to the sun. <laughs> they are praying to the sun. Yes. From, from a Pauranic Vish Vishnu and Pauranic Shiva, yeah. Also subject to the sun, correct? Yes, the energy center, yes. Thank you, yeah. thank you for sharing a beautiful gem. Aditya Hrdi, yes. It is a, it is a beautiful uh, shloka well, to recite, especially recommended for those who are suffering from depression and feeling down and all that, right? Wow. Exactly, exactly. And, and the story behind that, uh, that is also very interesting. Yes. Probably you know it. It's the middle mean, of Ramayana. Yes, world, yes. Right? <laughs> Rama, yes. Rama gets to do that. Yes. yes. Yeah, Rama got that from Rishi Agastya. Agastya so, yeah. yeah. Thank you for bringing that because this is how we need to put things together in perspective yeah. and swim or immerse ourselves in that light. Yeah. No, it is the how this is reinforced in multiple paths, right? Purusha <laughs> Sukta to what uh, Surya Namaskar. This was it revealing to me how to use Surya Namaskar for this. But the 12 <laughs> names are also mentioned in Aditya Right. Yeah, they are. Yes. That's another yeah. third path. And maybe yes. I'm sure there's much more. Yeah, yeah. And that's the reality, right? That's Lovely. because it's real. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Great contribution from your side, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Anybody you. else, sir, please. Let's make it active. 
I wanted to say thank you for bringing out this concept of gratitude with Surya Namaskar. That was very powerful for me. You mentioned how uh, it goes through multiple layers. One of the things that always fascinates me is when I feel the heat on my body, if I'm outdoors, especially in Central Valley, the thought comes, scientists have told us that it takes eight minutes for the rays of the sun to reach Earth. Correct. And it, it just is a marvel to me that something that traveled, it took eight minutes to reach my skin, yeah. is so powerful that it's still yeah. almost like a burning heart. It's just amazing. It is, it is amazing. And, and you brought a really, really good point. Surya Namaskar is all about experience. I mean, it's not about numbers. It's not about its severity or stress or uh, how many I did or nothing like that. I mean, it's all about experience. Uh, my personal experience is, I mean, you should go out. Uh, if you have a seashore near you, go there right before the sunrise and feel the cold. Uh, I live near Pacific. It's extremely cold on Pacific. It's like chilling cold, bone chilling, and it's like 35s and 40s right before the sunrise. And you wait for the sun. And the moment you uh, see the rising sun, it will start warming up and you will appreciate the sun more because you have experienced that cold and the wind and, uh, and the darkness of the atmosphere. And now you're experiencing all the brightness and the warmth of the sun. And that is the experience I want people to have. I mean, Surya Namaskar is all about experiencing the sun. Beautiful. And you can experience the sun at any point of uh, day. I mean, uh, just between two minutes, you can go out and look at the sun and come back. I mean, it will recharge your batteries. It's that powerful. Free I mean, charging station. Yeah. Free charging station available. Free charging everywhere. station, Super yeah. Charging. It is a free charging station, yeah. Oh, Nikhilji, I have a question. Yes. So please. there are other natural elements, right? There is air, there is water, space. And why are we focusing only on the sun? Because it, there are different natural elements. <laughs> why we think sun is more powerful than all the other elements? Uh, no, no, not really. No, uh, we are not saying anybody is powerful here. So, so energy-wise, uh, right? We see wind energy. Uh, other elements also have some kind of energy, right? Water might have some right, energy. Right, right, right. But all those are created from the energy from sun. Because okay. those, that the, the only donor in the solar system is the sun. And that energy has changed its form. To different elements and some of those elements might have got into the air some of these elements might have got into the water and the earth and so basic source is the sun so that but that's a really good point so my experience i was talking about going to the sea and experiencing it so why do i really go to the sea or why do i really go to a place that is close to a water body because my experience is in those places, you have all the five elements coming together. And this is a perfect yoga of the elements. You will find water, air, sky, and the fire. And of course, the earth is there. And all these five elements are around you. And the moment you see the sun rising on the east side, I mean, you feel like, okay, he is the creator of everything. I mean, that is a very fulfilling and very unique feeling that you are with the five elements. And then when you see the sun, you want to appreciate the sun. That's all I can think of. And, and it is not about sun being powerful or anything. I mean, all the five elements are equally important. And we are, of course, made up of all the five elements. So for us, as a human existence, yes, we should appreciate all five of them. But there is, uh, there is a creator for all five of them, and that is sun. So we appreciate sun. And, and there are other ways, there are other forms people have uh, envisioned for, they call it as earth namaskar and water namaskar and all that. I have not explored that much, but, okay. but that's a good question. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Nikhilji, there's one more point. You know, there are upasanas, uh, sub-upasanas for all the Panchamahabhutas, 
Right. And there is one major upasana also, which is called Hiranyagarbha upasana. Mm -hmm. So the Hiranyagarbha or the golden womb, if you could say, of the universe, it includes water, air, everything. Mm -hmm. So this you have taken up, I think, from a Surya perspective. So yeah. Madhukaru, yes, there are other upasanas also for each element of the Panchabhaputa. Right. Vikilji, one question. Thank you, While Thank answering you. Madhuji, you said uh, the source of all these Panchabhutas is sun. Did I hear that correct or did I not? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I, I, I have not, yeah, I, in my head, I was thinking the reverse. I thought the sun is a product which came is one of the manifestations of the Panchabhutas, like so many other things in the in the universe. So I'm struggling a little bit with that concept of sun is the source of Panchabhutas. Um, if you can elaborate on that. Uh, no, I mean, we can take the energy principle. I mean, it's, it's, it should not be that, uh, let me go back. Mm -hmm. So we talked about this energy principle. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have E is equal to MC square. Okay. C is a constant. Let's take a look at just E and M. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every for uh, every energy there is equivalent mass. Okay. Okay. So for every element, we are talking about the Pancha Mahabhuta. The Pancha Mahabhuta has each of them has some kind of a mass, be it air, be it water, be it earth. Everything has a mass. So it I'm, has equivalent amount of energy. Okay, I'm I'm and actually I'm, I'm I actually, I actually lost you when you said the pancha mahabhutas have mass. Uh, isn't that more like a quality of like everything has every object has certain qualities and those qualities match with one of those pancha bhutas and. If you take one step back, then all those objects were created as a result of those mm. subtle energies. Is that a uh, wrong way of understanding it? or No, 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 no. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the qualities. Qualities, yes, I mean, there will be qualities. Uh, but mass is, is something called uh, a substance, a matter. There is a matter, right? When you take mm -hmm. some air, it has some weight. Like, like a box of air also has some weight or a, a bottle of water has some weight. So it has a mass in it. And that mass is actually an equivalent of energy. And so whatever you see in the solar system and all these Panchamahabhutas are on the earth, right? They may not be there on the Mars. They may not be there on the Uranus, right? We have yet to identify that. So they are there on the earth and everything has a mass, so it has everything has an equivalent amount of energy. That means that you can convert that mass into energy form. Uh, I mean, hypothetically, everything that has a mass can be converted into equivalent amount of energy. And that energy source is sun. And that's the theory is, I mean, everything that we see, feel is being created by the sun. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. From my uh, limited, very limited knowledge, yes, please. and I pray to God every morning. And I think Ishwar is the uh, Bhagavan is the one who is in the first person, the first energy to create sun, moon, whatever, the, all the five elements. So even when I bring the lamb to the God first, God's picture, and then I look at the window, show the lamp to outside for the sun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I never think sun as my God is mm -hmm. the main portion of my Bhagavan who has created this for us to live. That's what my limited, limited thing. Mm, that is that is right, and and there is nothing right or wrong here. I mean, it's uh, it's all about uh, our understanding. Um, but yes, I mean, in, in Rugveda also, they have mentioned it like there are different gods, but the only visible god is sun that you can see every day. And as you said, the Bhagavan, yes, it is possible. 
but to give you another perspective, uh, one of the name of Surya is Aditya. And the meaning of Aditya is, Aditya is something that is coming out of Aditi. Aditi is like the godmother of everything, like the godmother of universe. And sun is like the son of that godmother. And that's why the sun is called Aditya. And so, I mean, that's one way to look at it. Like if we call this, my, maybe the black hole as Aditi and the ray of light coming out of it from Purusha Sutta is like the Aditya. Maybe that can be one way to look at it as sun as a god. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Then one thing, uh, so awakening the sun within us. Yeah. So can we also take a message like, you know, respect our body, mind, soul as it is? Like, you know, can we take that message also? Like, you know, in whatever way it is, respect for it. And, you know, instead of like, you know, there are like, there could be instances like where people don't accept what they are. So for that, can we respect the sun within us? So can we take a message like that also? Absolutely, absolutely. My understanding is our body is a precious, precious ornament. It is not like some, some, some hook used to uh, dock a ship or something like that. It is not a heavy thing. It is a very, very delicate ornament. And our first job is to take care of our body. Everything else comes afterwards. And that's my number one priority. So what they call is, is uh, dharmarasa kama mokshana. So for everything, if, we wa if I want to accomplish any of my four purusharthas, all that is going to help me is my body. So my first priority is my body. And Surya Namaskar is one awesome tool. Uh, it uses 97% of your muscles in one iteration. Okay. So if you have even a small pain in any part of your body, any part, I mean, uh, it can be your, uh, I mean, uh, foot, finger or anywhere, any part of your body. And if you do Surya Namaskar, you will figure out that there is a pain. And the moment you figure out, because that means that part is being worked out. So Surya Namaskar is one way to figure out I mean, it's like a certification of your body that your if you can do like one repetition without any pain and stress, it is like a certification of your body that everything in your body is, is okay. And if you can do 108 Surya Namaskars, that means like you are fit. You are pretty much fit to do everything in your life. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that's there. But one more thing, what I wanted to say is like, you know, accept yourself as you are so that and you breathe, then the sun is like, you know, the sun within you is like, you know, you're thanking it and the gratitude to yourself, like so the sun within you. Indeed, so, indeed. Yes. So yes. that is what I just wanted to say. Sir. Thank you. sir. Exactly. And, and uh, Surya Namaskar is a very uh, good tool, easy, accessible tool to get back to present. So our mind has a tendency to either go back in the past or go forward in the future. It is not really in agreement to come to the present. So Surya Namaskar is your opportunity to come to the present. And in present, you accept everything. Just think about it. This is the moment. If you are in this moment, you really don't have any worries. You really don't have anything to... Uh, be guilty about anything to be cautious about anything to be anxious about so present if you are in present i mean all your guilt and worries and fears are i mean they are not with you and surya namaskar is going to give you that opportunity so it is going to give you a complete acceptance in terms of what you are i mean i have seen people uh, who are suffering from osteoporosis but they want to do surya namaskar so, I mean, for them, they can sit on a chair and, and feel the sun and, and just, just close your hands, close your eyes and thank the sun. Say, Om Ram Mitraya Namaha. If you say that, what does that really mean is you are making sun your friend. And when you are making sun your friend, you can talk anything to sun. Sun is going to talk anything to you. So, this is like a relation of friendship and you are making a really mighty friend here. 
so i think that is going to make you feel good that is going to get you a very positive feeling about yourself about your life and that's all about it and that energy is going to stay with you at least for the rest of the day one more connection i do with sun is a daily like you know i i see that you know sun goes everywhere like you know so where i cannot reach like okay my parents far so i say take care of them so that kind of uh, wonderful, thing relation wonderful 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 great great so that Because is the sun is rising the so sun is always rising some part of the earth right so what a what a great way of thinking Yeah, I like that. I like that idea too. Because yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. what Vimala Ji is doing is using Sun as the messenger and as a messenger. to reach to reach yeah. first her parents and maybe yeah. others too, her yes, friends, sir. close ones. Great, yes, sir. great. That wonderful, is the DC connect, communicate, and commune the yeah. whole world. Yeah, great. All right. Uh, I think uh, due to paucity of time, we need to limit the questions. But then, please, please send the questions if you have. either to me or to nikhil kulkarni i think his uh, uh, email id is nskulkarni@gmail.com am i right uh, I, yeah i I'll, i'll if you like i can send a copy of this presentation to you uh, it will stay with you if you have any questions we can talk about it more right right and then uh, once again thank you very much uh, for your attendance and at the same time uh, i wanted to make one small announcement next wednesday we will be having another talk uh by a gentleman by name rajesh samanguru he because of chaturmasya coming up in july and he is a great practitioner for several years even being in the valley as a high tech professional i thought you might want to listen in to rajesh and see what message he has for us as far as our eating habits our fasting habits if any or moderating how to eat is concerned uh so next wednesday it would be at the same time as part of the loka kalyana seva talks and i'll send you an email and uh, welcome you all for that meeting also once again namaste thank you very much nikhil ji appreciate bye bye thank you nikhil ji thank you sir thank you so much nikhil bhagne ji and thank you kumar padmini ji for organizing Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Kumar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kumar Garu. Namaste. Thank you very much, sir. So, Lishwar. Thank you. So, Nikhil ji, can you transfer? Yes, I'll make you the host, and then yeah. stop the recording. You have to stop the recording. Yeah, please.